This program is presented by University of California Television. Like what you learn? Visit our website or follow us on Facebook and Twitter to keep up with the latest UCTV programs. UCLA is a university with unlimited possibilities for students that desire world-class academics and research, unmatched diversity, incredible cultural and social opportunities, successful alumni and career networking, first-class campus facilities, plus America's top intercollegiate sports teams. Located in Westwood, just a few miles from the Pacific Ocean, UCLA's one square mile campus is surrounded by famous cities such as Bel Air, Beverly Hills, Brentwood, and Santa Monica. Hi everybody and welcome to Westwood for UCLA Bruin Talk. This is Allison Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus, and we're thrilled to have you with us. Great show today, we start talking about sports that get played outdoors. It's springtime, we hope you enjoy it. Before we meet our first guest, let's take a look at the upcoming events. UCLA baseball has established itself as one of the nation's premier programs. Making it to Omaha last year for the College World Series, the Bruins are hoping to get back again as the season winds down into the second half. We're very pleased to be joined by a second-year assistant coach for the Bruin baseball team, Rex Peters on Bruin Talk. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Dave. It must have been incredible going to the World Series in your first year as an assistant coach. Yeah, that was... Uh kind of a once-in-a-lifetime experience you know I had an opportunity to do that uh, as a player in college and hadn't been back in many years so it was a great opportunity to, to get back there and experience Omaha and, and competing on the national uh, level. The new stadium is pretty nice isn't it? Yeah it's uh, they did a remarkable job uh, building that stadium and the, and the city of Omaha their support of that event is, is tremendous as well. You are primarily a hitting coach and you also work with the outfielders Last year, the Bruins had a big increase in their on-base percentage, batting average, getting guys on base. Tell us about the progress of the team at the plate this year. It's uh, it's an entirely new group for the most part. You know, we uh, we lost uh, the first five hitters in that lineup from from 2012, so it's a little bit of an ex inexperienced group. Um, but we're trying to you know build a little bit and, and get them to the point where they can fit into the offensive philosophy, which is, you know, a get on base uh, type uh, mentality. Uh, it's a young group, but like I said, I think uh, we like their talent and uh, we think as the year goes on, uh, we'll get better. Dave alluded to the fact that you primarily work with the hitters and the outfielders, but with Coach John Savage, the pitching staff is always a strength here at UCLA. How important is it for the pitching staff to work with the offense to create a complete balanced team? Well, any success at this level starts with pitching on the mound, and you got to be able to pitch and play defense. And uh, you know, having you know a pitching staff that is exceptional obviously makes the offense a little bit better too. Uh, when you're trying to you know only score four or five runs to win a game instead of seven or eight, it, it makes it a lot better. But uh, 
you know, they go hand in hand. You know, good pitching and, and defense is where it starts, but you got to be able to scratch out enough runs to be successful as well. This is not a team that is a long ball team. As we speak today, the Bruins had eight home runs on the season, three of them by Pat Vileka. Nobody else has more than one. So you're going to need guys to get on base and, and ways to move them over. Yeah, that's true. And I think college baseball in general is, is not a power game anymore. Uh, it's more about uh, getting base runners on base and moving them over and, and hopefully getting enough quality at bats with guys on base to score runs. You know, that's kind of our philosophy uh, with our offense is high on base percentage, uh, the ability to execute and then get some quality at bats with, with guys in scoring position. Uh, so it's, it's a pretty basic philosophy, but it's not easy to implement. We always focus on offense, especially talking about college baseball. But when you think about the World Series and you think about putting pressure on a pitcher, on a defense, how important is that, getting a leadoff man on, trying to get him over? What kind of pressure does that put on in the World Series when you get into that atmosphere? Uh, without a doubt, it puts pressure on, on the defense. And, and the key you said there is to get the leadoff hitter on. Once you get the leadoff hitter on, you can do a lot of things to pressure a defense. Uh, if you don't get the leadoff hitter on, then obviously you're only working with two outs, and it's, it's much more difficult. But, uh, you know, we like to have athletic players that can run a little bit to, to do those things. And, uh, you know, Coach Bruce, who's our recruiting coordinator, has done a very good job of, of recruiting those type of athletes that fit into our system. Coach, you mentioned the recruits. This year was the number two recruiting class in the country, and a lot of the freshmen have already had a vital, have played a vital role in the team's success so far this season. What are your thoughts on the freshmen? It's a good class, obviously ranked number two. Um, I think there's a learning curve involved anytime a freshman goes and plays, it, it, and especially in the Pac-12. Um, you know, so they're going to learn, and they're going to have some ups and downs, but uh, you know, we're counting on them to contribute. And for us to accomplish our goals as a team, we need some freshmen to step up and, and play well for us. You also just alluded to the Pac-12, which is always one of the strongest conferences in the country. Right now, as we speak, there are five teams in the top 30. How do you think it plays into the part of success when you're constantly playing these tough opponents weekend after weekend? Well, it prepares you for postseason play. You know, you play at a high level in the Pac-12 against those type of opponents, and then you get to postseason, it's not a big adjustment for you. So I think if you can succeed in the Pac-12, then your chances of, of playing well in postseason are pretty good. A lot of people talk about the strength of the Pac-12 and overlook the fact that at UCLA, you're playing Tuesday games out of conference against some of the nation's best. Fullerton, Long Beach, Irvine, always good programs that you have to play in the midweek games. Does that give you an edge over some of the conferences that have great conferences but not a lot of outside competition in their region? Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, you know, the West Coast baseball is strong uh, up and down the state, and there's a lot of quality opponents outside of the Pac-12 that we can compete against, and, and those teams are certainly uh, well-respected programs that uh, help us prepare for postseason. At this point of the year, Bruins are 18-7. and seven. You're about halfway through the schedule. When does the team start getting into a postseason sort of mindset? Well, yeah, I think you got to kind of be in it all year long in the Pac-12. If you're not in postseason mindset in the Pac-12, you're going to get run over a little bit. So uh, it really starts once Pac-12 play begins, and it, and it continues all the way through till till June and hopefully July. Coach, I want to talk a little bit about your path that brought you to UCLA, previously head coach at Chapman and UC Davis. And on the outside, a lot of people would say, I can't believe – he was at a, in a head coaching job and came to take an assistant job at UCLA. What was the process that brought you here? Well, I think just an opportunity to work uh, with a high-level program like UCLA and, and as well as work with John. You know, I've known John for, for many years, and uh, you know, I kind of have some roots in Southern California. Uh, I played you know, in Southern California, and I coached here for, for nine years before I went to UC Davis. And the opportunity to get back, to Southern California and work with a program that uh, is one of the elite programs in the country is, is really why I did it. UCLA has produced so many players who end up on major league rosters. Uh, you think about Brandon Crawford winning a World Series with the Giants last year, one of the most recent. That's got to be helpful when it comes to recruiting. Oh, without a doubt. You know, when kids can see that your program is developing players and producing 
professional players and major league players that are successful, it certainly helps you in the recruiting process and in getting kids that are you know blue chip type recruits. Coach, you have obviously been involved in baseball for a really long time. It's an integral part of your life. What made you start playing baseball in the first place when you were a little kid? Uh, well, my father was a coach, uh, football and baseball at the high school level. Uh, so I kind of grew up around athletics and, and baseball. And, you know, I was kind of torn coming out of uh, high school where to play football or, or baseball and realized I wasn't quite big enough to play football. So I chose baseball and had a pretty good collegiate career. And, you know, once it gets in your blood at such a young age and it's been there for so long, it's kind of hard to get out and you want to stay around the game. And the best way to do that when your playing career is over is to coach. Well, what kind of advice do you give to players that are torn? I can think of a couple examples. Carl Crawford with the Dodgers was offered a scholarship to be an option quarterback at Nebraska. Obviously, the path he chose in baseball was the right one. Yet Jared Page, who played at UCLA, played in the outfield and also ended up in the NFL with Kansas City. How, how do you help kids make that decision about whether to go to baseball or football? Well, that's not an easy decision, but I think you really have to look at uh, – Longevity wise, what's the best fit for you as an athlete? And you know, some kids are better suited to play football and other kids are better suited to play baseball. And in my case, you know, I didn't want to put my body through the rigors of playing college football and I thought I had a better chance to play professionally as a baseball player. So that's why I chose baseball. As we've mentioned, the Bruins are going into the back half of the season, looking to postseason play, looking to finish out Pac-12 play strong. What do the Bruins need to do the remainder of the season to ensure that there is a long playoff run in the future? We just need to continue to get better. You know, uh, we have the talent and the personnel to get the postseason and make a run, uh, but we just got to get better. You know, we need to get better on the mound, defensively, offensively. We certainly have room to get better. But as, if we can just continue to strive to improve each day, uh, then once you get to postseason, it's about who's playing the best baseball at the time, and that's really the goal. So if we can get better and then peak at the right time at the end of the year. Last year, the Bruins got to play some games at home. You hope to do that every year in the in the tournament. But now as you look toward the end of the season, is, is gaining a home hosting opportunity paramount? Well, it certainly helps. Um, you know, anytime you can play a playoff game in familiar surroundings and in front of a home crowd, it's an advantage. Um, it's not an impossible road if you have to go, you know, away to play in postseason, but certainly you'd like to be at home in postseason. If you look at the track record, teams that traditionally host in postseason have a little bit easier road to Omaha. There are 56 games in the season. We're already about halfway through. It may not be fun anymore. It may not be as exciting as the beginning of the season. It's not as exciting as the end of the season. How do you ensure that your guys stay focused and locked in and have fun going out there every day? Well, it really comes down to how you practice. You know, kids need to, you only have two practice days a week once the season starts. So it's, uh, you know, an opportunity to get better and just keep improving. And then uh, hopefully, you know, you have good practices, quality practices, that will carry over into good performance on game day. Coach, best of luck to you and the Bruins, and uh, everybody's hoping another run to Omaha is in the cards for you. Thanks for coming and joining us on Bruin Talk. Thanks, Dan. Thanks, Alice. And we'll be right back with more UCLA Bruin Talk right after these brief public service announcements. A trophy can be made just about anywhere. But there's one place where champions are made. UCLA, champions meet here. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Bruin Talk. It is now time to honor our Student Athlete of the Week. This week, we honor Gonzalo Quiroga as our Athlete of the Week. In the UCLA men's volleyball win over Cal State Northridge, Gonzalo led all players with 22 kills and a 576 attack percentage. Additionally, he led his teammates by posting 24 and a half points in the match. The victory against the Matadors marked another five-set comeback win for the Bruins this season. Congratulations, Gonzalo, and good luck with the rest of the season. 
If you would like additional information about UCLA athletics, please visit our website at uclabruins.com. Well, we told you we were going to talk about outdoor sports on this edition of Bruin Talk, and there is no more outdoor sport than golf. UCLA's golf team always a national power, and we're very pleased to have one of the stars of the team all the way from Sweden in his senior year at UCLA, Pontus Wiedegren, with us. Welcome to Bruin Talk. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Uh, you're having a great senior year. You won the tournament at Cal State San Marcos with a 54-hole total of 18 under. That is an incredible score. Great way to start your year, wasn't it? Yeah, it, w it was really great. Um, I had a tough start, actually, coming back from the summer. Didn't play very well, so I missed my first tournament. Um, that was actually the first tournament I missed in my, my career here at UCLA. So it was a, it was a bit different, sitting out, not traveling. Um, but it was also, you know, good motivation for me to come back and play well uh, in the later half of the, of the fall. You have a long season. The championships are still pretty far in the future. Um, golf is a sport where it is just consistency. That's the name of the game. What have you been doing over the course of the season to work on your consistency? I worked worked a lot on my driving. Um, driving the ball has been key uh, to my successful play lately, and. Um, uh, it gives me more opportunities to score from the fairways and in, so um, it's been fun since I've been hitting more fairways. And Pontus, from Sweden, you're used to driving the ball in meters, not in yards. How hard is that to deal with all the American courses where the distances are in yards? Uh, it's not too bad. It's not very hard. It's uh, You get used to the conversion, uh, taking off 10% if the yardage is in, is in yards. Uh, I have my teammate Pedro, who's from Portugal as well, so we've been we've been in the same situation and you know discussing yardages a lot, and uh, um, it's not too bad. Well, we use that phrase in American golf, discussing yardages. What do you say over in Europe, discussing uh, yardages? Uh, no, we, we we say yardages as well okay. if we speak <laughs> English, but otherwise uh, we'd use some different word, but it would be yardage. Yeah. Pontus, we've alluded to the fact that this is your senior season. Uh, do you have any goals for this year? What are you looking forward to doing in the latter half of the season to finish out your, your Bruin career strong? Uh, I would like to continue to play well. Um, that's really all I can, I can uh, uh, try and do. Um, I'd, I'd like to win um, a tournament or two coming down the stretch here. It would be a lot of fun. Um, but I'm, I'm happy with the way I'm playing at the moment, and uh, I'm just going to try and, like you, like you said earlier, try and stay patient and uh, keep my momentum going. Golf is a long season, as we've talked about. How do you make sure that you, not only your body stays healthy, but your mo your mind stays locked in? It's got to be hard to basically stay focused for the whole year. Yeah, it is a long season. We go all year round. Uh, it is sometimes tough with school as well, managing managing your time and, and spending the right time practicing, the right time studying. Um, but I think we all do a great job here at UCLA. We get we have great coaches, great help from the uh, trainers and uh, the athletic performance staff as well. So um, we're very well taken care of, and we should be should be in good shape for the rest of the season. Pontus, the NCAA tournament format is very interesting with stroke play components and then match play components. How much did your experience in the Palmer Cup, where you helped Europe beat the U.S., how much did that match play experience, how, what, what kind of an advantage will that be for you as you look forward to playing in the championships? Uh, I definitely think it helps out. I think match play is, is a little bit different, and, and if you haven't played match play a lot, uh, it, can, it can be... Um, can be very different at times. It's it's a bit of a different strategy at times. You you play off your opponent a little more than you do uh, when you normally play stroke play. You just play the golf course. Um, so it's a bit different. I mean, my um, my my match play uh, experience is definitely going to be helpful since it's the the most important part of the tournament. Let's talk a little bit about that Palmer Cup because that had to be thrilling playing in an international competition like that. Oh yeah, it's great. It's one of the one of the most fun weeks a year. Uh, We've had we've had great teams all, every year, and we've lost uh, for in the three times I've played. We lost only by a point in the first two matches, and then we uh, had a great comeback last year. So that was that was a lot of fun. On the European tour, and even on the American tour in the professional ranks, Swedish golfers have had an impact. What were your inspirations growing up? How did you get involved in playing the game? Um, obviously. Touring pros such as Jesper Parnovic and um, Robert Carlson, Henrik Stenson were um, were um, big names that I looked up to. Uh, Parnovic is actually actually went to the same high school as I did. Um, I don't know him very well. Very well. I've, I've played golf with him only once, uh, but he's a fun guy. 
Um, you don't dress like him. <laughs> luckily, I don't, right? <laughs> uh, no, he's a bit, um, a bit out there with some of his uh, clothing decisions, but uh, he's a great character. I mean, he's meant a lot for Swedish golf, too. So, I want to continue with the discussion of international play versus play here in the U.S. How is it different for you to compete in an event like the Palmer Cup versus playing here with your Bruin teammates? Um, it's a little bit different since you don't know everyone as well. I mean, the guys on the team here, we, we all know each other really well and we spend a lot of time practicing together. Uh, the Palmer Cup is a little bit different because you just, you see each other for a week and you have, you have two days of practice. Um, but it, I'd say I'm more, I'm, I'm more nervous then because you're competing on a team, you're representing the whole group. Um, and you don't, you don't know each other well enough to really, you don't know how to feel in certain uh, certain situations. Um, but it, the cool thing also is that w once you realize you're all on the same team and you're all trying to do the same thing, it's uh, it makes for a great experience. When the pros go to an event, they get the whole Tuesday practice round and the Wednesday pro-am practice round. By the time they get to the first tee, they really know the course inside out. College golf, are you getting to courses where you don't get much of a of a practice round on them? Yeah, sometimes it's um, it's a it could even be a practice round before the the first round in the same day. Yeah, we haven't had that uh, happen very many times, but um, it happens. Um, and college golf is quick. It's um, in and out. You go to a place and you spend three pretty intensive um, in intensive days at the same course, and you get out of there. So uh, sometimes you don't have a lot of time to to get to know the golf course. Um, but when you when you if you play a lot and you become it's a junior or a senior, you've seen the golf courses before and it makes it a little bit easier. I want to talk a little bit about team chemistry here at UCLA. The only team experience in golf that casual fans see is something like the Ryder Cup, but golf is typically thought of as an individual sport, but in college, the team component is huge. How important it is, is it for you guys to bring in that team chemistry on a daily basis? Uh, it's very, it's very important. Um, like we said earlier, it's a, it's a tough schedule playing, playing golf in college. You're away, you're missing a lot of school. Uh, the tournament days are long. Uh, so when we're back on campus, it's important that we, that we get our work done. Um, and uh, the great thing about our team is that we have so many good players. We, we are challenged every morning when we go to practice over at Bel Air Country Club. Um, so um, it's if you know we, we need all the support that we can get from each other and kind of feed off each other. You know, if one guy's playing well, you want to make sure that you're beating him the next morning. So it it, it, it makes you really makes you better being around being around the guys. The Bruins play as you mentioned, Bel Air Country Club, Riviera. You know, great courses in the Southern California area. You grew up in Sweden, not exactly a tropical climate. The NCAA's this year are just outside of Atlanta. At one of the great names ever, Crab Apple Golf Club. Uh, what's the key to playing in that heat and humidity that you have to face when you're in that event? Uh, key is to drink a lot of water, try and stay hydrated like in any other sport. Um, try and stay in the shade if you can. Um, like I said before, it's long days. Um, you gotta try and stay patient, uh, be efficient with your energy, and try and uh, take advantage of your opportunities when they when they come. How old were you when you began to play, and how old were you when you realized that you were really good at it? Um, I, I first, I mean, I I started swinging a plastic club when I was still in my di in diapers, but uh, I, I first I really started playing when I was seven or eight. Um, and um, actually, I won my club championship when I was 13, uh, and then that sort of got me going in, in golf. And uh, the year after, I was I was selected, or I, I had a good result in the tournaments. So I was um, given a spot to play in this the um, European Boys Championship, and that was my first real tournament with the national team, and the first time things in golf were were bigger than the things I did with uh, in hockey or tennis that I also played. So. Um, Golf kind of outgrew my, the other sports I was playing, and it became more important and, and more fun. So many players on the PGA Tour have college golf experience. Some sports people, you know, go into the pros when they're 18 years old, but a lot of golfers have the college experience, get out, don't really peak in their golf career until they're in their 30s. What is it about golf that makes college such a good conducive environment to developing your overall game? And the academic part of it as well making a kind of a whole well-rounded person. Pretty valuable experience that I think pays off in people's golf game. What is it about this sport that requires people to mature as they get a little older? 
Well, I, I think uh, golf, professional golf can be pretty lonely at times. Uh, you're, you're out there, you're, you're traveling a lot, you're, um, you're most likely spending a lot of time by yourself. Um, it's very lonely on the golf course as well. You're, you're only there, and maybe you have a, a caddy that maybe is your friend, and, or hopefully is your friend, but maybe <laughs> it is a good friend is what I'm trying to say. Uh, and it's it's a it could be a curling a tough game at times. Um, so I think the whole experience of of, uh, of college and and traveling, uh, being busy with school at the same time and, and trying to um, pursue the dream of, of playing professional golf at the same time is is a really good really good preparation for you. I was just about to ask you as you're winding down your career here at UCLA, do you have professional aspirations? Is that what's the next step for you? Yeah, absolutely. That's it's always been my dream. Uh, it's one of the reasons I came here to prepare myself for a professional career. Big time of the year, and we wish you the best of luck as you head down the stretch leading up toward the NCAA championships. Pontus, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us on UCLA Bruin Talk. That's going to do it for this edition, but Alice and I will be back next week with another great show. Until then, for Alice and Taylor, I'm Dave Marcus saying so long from Westwood. We'll see you next time.